What's up guys, the Amiga Boys here and I'm finally, finally back with another video. This time I'm bringing you 7 more iconic builds from the course of PoE history and of course as always these clips are not owned by me so the credit will go to the original owners. I also want to give a big shout out to GGG for the amazing music from this video and also for supporting the game for so many years. You guys are really amazing. If you also have other suggestions for a part 3 like it builds or anything like that, you can always let me know down in the description. But I know you guys have been waiting a long time for this video, so let's just not waste more time, but instead get right into the video. Worm Blaster is one of those builds that most of us probably wouldn't ever forget. It was by far the most requested build in the last video and man oh man I feel so bad for letting this one slip through. I totally forgot it existed but damn this build was literally unkillable. Avery K. Ken, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, managed to outsmart GGG every time they tried to nerf it and it took them 4 tries to finally make this build kiss the dust. The build revolved around one thing really important, which was worms. Taking advantage of the riffing jar, better known as the worm flask, this build would do all kinds of crazy shit whenever the worms died. In the first version, Abyssal Cry was abused due to the fact that all the worms had a crazy amount of life and meant that the chaos damage explosions dealt an insane amount of damage too, since it scaled over monster life as well. But it didn't take long until GGG caught onto it and nerfed it by massively reducing the maximum life of the worms. But don't worry, the build wasn't dead yet. Actually, the era of Worm Blaster had only just really begun. This time, abusing cast on melee kill that back then didn't have an internal cooldown to deal an insane amount of damage since every time the poor little worm died, a cataclysm of spells would be triggered, showering the monsters in damage while also gaining flask charges from the harvest. As you can see, the build was really really fucking overpowered. But, once again, it didn't take long for GGG to kill it by limiting the trigger to only one skill per event. But as always, a Ricky Ken managed to find a new way for Worm Blasters to rise and this time Herald of Ice was involved. By using Crit Blade Vortex to on self-cast, the worms automatically died and proc the Herald of Ice explosions with crazy amounts of AoE, resulting in the explosions overlapping and dealing a ton of damage to the boss. At the same time he was able to permanently sustain the Worm Flask from the Harvest Axe since it gave Flask charges on Critical Strike. But even though GGG tried to nerf the build again by nerfing Blade Vortex and the Flash Charge Generation, Worm Blaster still managed to survive. Now taking advantage of Herald of Ash instead of Herald of Ice, players were able to deal an insane amount of overkill damage due to worms having such a low life pool from the previous nerfs, resulting in ridiculously high double dipping Herald of Ash ignites, insta killing almost all bosses in the game. But after a long reign, GGG finally managed to kill Worm Blaster for good when they introduced the new Ignite changes and Double Dipping changes. But yeah guys, even though the Worm Blaster is dead today, there could always be a 5th build popping up anytime soon now. And I'm definitely crossing my fingers, cause I love this build and I hope we'll see more of it in the future. Next up on the list we have the infamous Blender build. This build was a dual wield cleave build created by the player known as 2P. The build was focused around various types of defenses while still dealing a massive amount of damage, taking advantage of the Bringer of Rain, which back then gave free level 18 gems and over 200 life. This build was able to reach upwards of 45k DPS, which was insane back in beta. The build was really defensive even though it had a low life pool since it combined various defensive mechanics such as blind, block, stun and freeze. The good thing about this build was that Reflect was no issue at all due to the high block and leech this build had. This meant that it was able to be played on Hardcore 2 due to not being scared of Reflect. The build was really powerful and was able to face tank most bosses and kill Piety in under 10 seconds which was quite an accomplishment back then. Nowadays it's not really that special. Taking advantage of Soul Taker's insane damage, yeah back in the day it had over 400 physical DPS made you able to attack while having no mana, which was huge since you back then used a lot of resources to sustain your mana. Overall this build was just really powerful compared to other melee builds back then and it's definitely one of those more iconic builds from all the way back in beta. Up 
Arc is one of those builds you rarely see being used today, but back in the day it was one of the most popular and most powerful builds in the game. The build had a fast clear speed due to the automatic targeting and chain, while also having a reasonable survivability as well. The build was really strong due to costing almost nothing, thus making for a good beginner friendly cookie cutter build and a great league starter. Using a plus 3 to Lightning Gems Wand or a Jeffrey's Crest made you able to clear maps on just a 3 to 4 link, which was really impressive and the reason why many people used it. One specific player named Fox Ta fuck, fuck, Fox Tactics. <laughs> he specialized in optimizing Arc and made tons of different builds featuring Arc as the main clearing skill. When Ziggity featured his own take on the Fox Tactics Archer in July 2014, back in the sacrifice of the Val expansion, that was when the build really started to grow in popularity. Less than two months after, Fox Tactics Pledge of Hands Archer got featured in Build of the Week Season 3 Episode 2 as well, leading to even more people playing Arc. There truly was an Arc meta going on and it's kinda sad that nobody really plays it anymore. Speaking of lightning builds, Ziggity made his Voltaxic Spark build in 2.2. The build took use of the newly added ascendancies, in this case Scion, which was pretty overpowered when it first came out. Abusing Berserker for the 1.5% mana and life leech as well as Deadeye for reaching 100% pierce on Spark, this build was really great and worked well regardless of how much currency you invested into it. Scion also had a crucial position on the tree, making it able to grab all the skill effect duration nodes, almost doubling the spark duration, and as a result, making the sparks fly way off screen and clear everything around you. This was also crazy good as a defensive option due to the skill nodes giving a whopping 16 second duration on Vile Grace and 4 second physical immunity on a Molo Call, since the build gained entrance charges from the Warlord's Mark curse. The build's first weapon of choice was Voltaxic Rift since it's back in the day converted all lightning damage to chaos, thus giving reflect immunity and resulting in a great hardcore option. After the item level restriction of item level 78 got removed from the Voltaxic, the bow got a lot easier to acquire, making the build way cheaper than it would have been previously. The single target damage was insane too, due to Spike being able to bounce off walls and hit monsters multiple times, even though shotgunning theoretically was removed. On top of that, Voltaxic also enables you to shock with your chaos damage, which along with the projectile nodes from the tree and from the drill neck, double dipped all your poison damage, giving you crazy single target damage on top of your already crazy clear speed. As you can see, this build was really really powerful, and as a result, it also got really really popular. In fact, it got so popular that it managed to reach over 850k views on YouTube, making it the most viewed Path of Exile build guide ever to exist on YouTube. And what would a PvE series showcasing iconic builds be without mentioning Gouda? Gouda was the number one game breaker and was really good at making builds that were just about everything else than actually playing the game. One of his most iconic builds was his legendary move speed build, which was Rayclast's equivalent of Usain Bolt. This build was insanely fast at ninja looting, but it was also extremely good at dying. He has made this build in several versions, managing to get more and more move speed as the game went on and new items were released. But the first was made back in open beta, managing to reach over 240% movement speed, which was insane back then. However, he later bumped that up by quite an amount when he around one year later in 2014 released his second iteration of the build. This time taking advantage of snapshotting and queen of the forest, he managed to reach over 550% movement speed, which is really 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 fast. But of course, since it's Gouda, he didn't stop there. So he made a third build that well, didn't quite beat his previous move speed record, but was interesting to say the least. This build was not about being fast, but instead about being very, very slow, actually as slow as possible. This build has several versions throughout the game's history, and I kinda hope we're gonna see some more in the future once new items get released. Either a faster build, or an even slower one. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have it, Baal Spark. One of the most, if not the most, iconic builds in PvE history, and one of those builds that you guys would kill me for not mentioning. So here we have it, Valspark. Valspark was that one build that GGG tried to nerf every fucking patch, but it still managed to stay on top, which is actually kind of impressive. 
However, they finally got it and it's kind of dead today. I don't see many people playing it today. But back then, this thing was the shit. It was really, really crazy. The build had everything you wanted. It had a crazy fast clear speed and magic find compatibility as well for those sweet loots. Some people would even argue that this was one of those builds that actually started the clear speed meta. People would clear maps in seconds and some people would even run dry lake all day for those sexy brittle emperor cards that back then actually had a fair price due to casting crit discharge builds being a thing. The thing that was so crazy about Valspark was the fact that you could cast it once and then you could continue to shoot out those small bouncy sparks that would go way off screen while you were moving through the map. That meant that Dried Lake was a really good zone for that since it was so open. This build gave one of the highest XP per hour while also giving one of the highest currency gains per hour at the same time. And the build was very effective in Dried Lake with cheap gear, mainly just a tablet Rasa corrupted with plus two to Val gems and a few new unique jewels like Chill of Corruption and Sacrificial Harvest. Apart from that, you could basically run with any any random gear, basically. If you had a lot of expensive gear, you could also take it to the next level, acquiring a Headhunter or a pair of Skyforce, or you could even get a pair of Insanity Gloves that back then had 20% more attack speed for even faster Whirling Blades. All in all, all these items made the build so much faster and so much more OP. Since a lot of big players and racers and streamers and so on were using this build for the level 100 race, it got very very popular and I'm quite sure that most of you guys that played back then have heard about this build or maybe even played it yourself. And yeah guys, I know I've been saying this for the last 5 builds now, but this build right here is also one of the most iconic builds out there, at least for the veteran players and those who played back in the day when Crip was streaming, all the way back in closed beta, or was it open beta? Back in 2013 at least. This build was so powerful, and according to Crip himself, it was... And I'm playing Discharge and Maps, just plowing everything on the screen, holy cow! Yeah, holy cow guys, but you know, it might not seem really powerful from today's standards because it's slow and all that, but from back in the day, this build was very powerful and really really fun to play. The build took use of custom damage taken in Molden Shell along with Endering Cry and Discharge for insane damage. The build also had Vile Packs, you would instantly lead your life back up, making Reflect not really a big problem. Taking advantage of the Searing Touch, which back then actually had a fair value due to the crazy Ignites build being out there. Crip was able to hit around 10k average damage on his discharge, which might not seem much today, but back then I can assure you that it was something to brag about. Along with the double dipping, he was able to one shot most map bosses and clear maps with full parties, which was extremely impressive back in 2013. The thing that was so impressive about the build was the fact that even though you didn't have a 100% chance to ignite, as long as you ignited one mob, you would ignite the whole screen due to the power of elemental proliferation. Overall, this build was just really powerful and one of those builds that all of us veteran players enjoy looking back upon and always get that feeling of nostalgia when we see. But there we go guys, that was all of the builds for today. I know it is only 7 builds this time, but I still really hope you enjoyed the video anyways. I decided just to make it 7 builds, as it already had been taking a long time to make and really didn't want to delay it any further. But as always, I have more cool builds on my mind, and once I have time, I'll definitely try to make it part 3. So yeah guys, thank you so much for watching, and if you like my other content, you can subscribe to get notified when I make the part 3, or just stay tuned on Reddit or something. But yeah, hope you guys had a wonderful day, and peace out.